So if you would, uh, turn with me to uh, Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, actually. Colossians chapter 3. And while you're turning there and while you're thinking about being invested, um, Colossians chapter 3, we're going to, um, I want you to think about and put in the comments something that you are enjoying about life right now. Something that you're enjoying about life right now. Go ahead and drop that in the comments. What are you enjoying about life right now? Um, there are several things that I am enjoying. I'll give you two um, in particular about life right now where we are. Uh, for me, I'm enjoying how much time we are spending outside as a family. Um, all my life, I have uh, loved the outdoors and gone outside and just been, uh, that's been a part of who I am. And so I have, have really enjoyed that. But now uh, we are spending a great deal of time outside as a family. And I love that. I'm so thankful for that. And uh, the kid, like I said, we went tobogganing yesterday. And uh, we've been on hikes. And we're planning on going ice skating. And just a bunch of different things that we're able to do outside, even at minus 11. I love it. I love it. It's so cold out. You put your nice warm clothes on and you go outside. And you can be out there for hours at a time if you dress properly. So I enjoy that. And so the second thing that I am currently enjoying is the amount of time we spend uh, as a family playing board games or playing games. I I love games. I've grown up playing games. Uh, My wife loves games. And so I would say pretty much five to six times a week, uh, we are playing a board game or a card game and as a, as a family. Um, and the wonderful thing is Zoe even gets involved as well. Uh, we allow her to play. Uh, she's actually pretty good. She's beat us several times in the game golf. It's a card game. Um, and uh, so she's beat us a couple times in that. And so we just enjoy those things. That's what we're currently enjoying. And the things that we enjoy, maybe you've dropped some things into the comments there, um, some things that we enjoy and the things that we enjoy, guess what we do? We put a lot of time and we put a lot of money into them. Um, I have bought, I just bought the kids some long johns to wear outside so that they stay warm. I put time and money into that. I put, so I put the money in and now I'm like, you're going to wear them. So let's go. We need to go outside and wear those things so that uh, I'm not wasting my money. And the same with board games. We have bought board games recently. We bought, uh, we bought Monopoly. We didn't own Monopoly. I can't even believe we didn't own Bono- Monopoly, but we didn't own it. And so we were able to teach the kids Monopoly and show them uh, how to play that. And guess how long a Monopoly game takes? It takes a long time, especially with kids, because kids didn't, they didn't, we were teaching them, we were telling them how to build houses and show them what they can do, and uh, when you pass go, you get another $200, and if the banker, usually me, is really slow at math, not always a good thing, so it takes a little bit more time, and my wife and I are constantly going back and forth, so you put a lot of time and effort and money into the things that you enjoy, and so all of these things and, um, I, that, we, that we do. We enjoy things, so we invest in them. We put time, energy, money into them. We invest in the things that we enjoy. If, if you will, the Bible puts it this way. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, the previous verses to these things are key. And we often say, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, if you uh, put your time and money into board games, then you love board games. And if you put your time and energy into using outdoors and uh, going outdoors, then you're gonna, uh, your heart is going to be there. And that's true. That's important. But the context behind this verse is incredibly important. I want you to uh, think about Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. The Bible says this, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And then it says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You see, Jesus here in Matthew chapter 6 on the Sermon on the Mount is very simply saying, listen, think about things that are eternal. Don't think about things that are earthly. Don't think about things that are on this earth, terrestrial, we call it. Think about things that are heavenly. And so this morning, I want to introduce to you our theme for 2021. 
Again, I believe that everyone, every single person should at least consider this theme. At least think about it. I believe everyone should strive toward accomplishing this theme. Accomplish it. I believe that this theme is one of the most important things that we need in this present time of our lives, in 2021. I believe that with all my heart, if I didn't, I wouldn't be presenting it to you today. I believe this is a need that we all need to think about, that we all need to be involved in. And the theme is, if you haven't noticed, invested. Invested. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll jump into this. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here this morning. Thank you for the trio and the song that they sang. Father, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to be invested in your will, to be invested in your work. Father, I pray that today people would see the need to be invested. Father, I pray that through this, we as Bible Baptist Church would continue to move forward continue to multiply our gifts because, Father, you are a part of it. And, Father, thank you so much for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for loving us so much doing that. And we love you because of it. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Invested. Invested. I love words. And so I looked up the word invested. And often, as I said earlier on, we use the term invested and we associate it with money. We invest in the stock market or we invest in a company or all, all, all kinds of different things. A lot of us have invested in homes, right? That's an investment, um, a vehicle, not an investment, not at all. Uh, they deteriorate very quickly. But I want you to understand this. Investment in money, that's only one-seventh of the definition of investment, One-seventh of the definition. So when we take a look at the word investment, we see that it actually means to clothe or to surround. To clothe or to surround. In fact, it's often referred to, in fact, in my dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, it says to see vest, to put on a vest, to put on a vesture, to put on clothes. This is important to remember because the Bible is full of references to clothing and to surrounding. In fact, in Matthew chapter 6, toward the end of the verse, or toward the end of the chapter, excuse me, God says that if God so clothes the grass of the field, same word, then he will also clothe you. He will invest in you. It's the same exact word. So let me be very clear this morning. I am calling on every single person that hears this message to be invested to be invested, to clothe, to surround something. But let me also be very clear. You might be asking, well, if it's only one-seventh of the definition of money, then what else is there? What are we to be invested in? I want to be very clear about this. I want you to see, number one, what should we invest in? We ought to invest in the kingdom of God. Invest in the kingdom of God. Of God. Again, Matthew chapter 6, we've started there, but Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, the Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Oftentimes in our lives, what we do is we look at these earthly things and we think, Oh, I need to invest in board games. And I need to invest in uh, outdoor clothing. And I need to invest in my, my home. And I need to invest in my family. And I need to invest in all of these different things, sports equipment and shoes. And we talk about all these things that we're going to invest in. And listen, I want you to understand, that's okay. But that ought not to be our number one priority. You see, this verse, Matthew chapter, or Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, the Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. So it's, it's not so much that we, if we invest in something else or if we invest in the stock market or if we invest in a company that we're wrong. That's not the point. The point is simply this. We ought to seek first the kingdom of God. Everything we ought to do ought to point to the kingdom of God. So I want to be very clear about this as well. I do not want anyone in any way to invest in Bible Baptist Church as an institution, hear me. Don't invest in Bible Baptist Church as an institution. 
I don't want anyone to think that, oh, Pastor Yeomans is just preaching this message so everybody will uh, help Bible Baptist Church grow. That's not at all. I believe Bible Baptist Church is important. But we want to fulfill the will of God in everything we say and do. We want to do the right thing. We want to lead properly. We want to move forward. But please hear me. If you invest solely in Bible Baptist Church as the institution, you will forget about the big picture. If you invest in Bible Baptist Church solely as the institution, you will forget about the big picture, the big picture of what God is trying to do in his entirety. His entirety. If you are invested in the kingdom of God, if you are invested in what God is trying to do on a global scale, if you're invested on the kingdom of God, guess what? You will be invested in Bible Baptist Church as the organism, not as the institution. Let me, let me uh, explain what I mean. Bible Baptist Church has budgets, we have a staff, we have buildings, and we have assets. And so though that's the institution of Bible Baptist Church, right? And th- those are all great things. And so as we move forward and as we continue to try to keep doing the will of God, we're going to need some of those things. But Bible Baptist Church as the organism is you and me, people. We're, we're, we are the church. This building that I stand in currently is not the church. We call it the church building, but that's all it is. You are the church. And so if you are going to invest in Bible Baptist Church, don't necessarily invest in the institution, but in the organism. The Bible says that we are members one of another. We are collectively an organism. We are a living, thriving body of Jesus Christ. Now again, we want to be good stewards. We want to run our budgets well. We'll have a budget meeting in just uh, a few weeks. We want to do those things well, and we want to uh, handle our assets and our buildings and take care of those things and take care of our staff and do the right things. But I want you to understand, there may come a day when we don't have a budget, when we don't have a staff, when we don't have this building, when we don't have assets. There may come a day when that happens. Let me ask you this question. Will you cease investing when that happens. You see, so often we get caught up in uh, the physical. We get caught up in the company. We get caught up in the, in the financial picture of our lives. But I want you to understand that's earthly. If you only invest in Bible Baptist Church as the institution, as the buildings, the staff, the assets, then you're missing out. What happens if I die? What happens if Pastor Holland or Pastor Levi leave or something happens? Listen, what happens if the government does come in and shut us completely down and we don't have buildings and we don't have assets anymore? Are you done investing? You shouldn't be. Because Bible Baptist Church is more than just a building. It's more than just an institution. It's an organism. It's a living, thriving body of Jesus Christ. And you are a part of that. So I don't want you investing necessarily in our church building or in our staff i want you to think about i want to invest in the kingdom of god i want to invest in what our church the organism is doing is doing outside of this building i hope that you'll think about investing wrapping yourself around the kingdom of god Giving everything that you have to the kingdom of God. Let me put it to you this way. Seek Christ. Our mission statement at Bible Baptist Church is to seek Christ and share hope. Seek Christ. Seek those things which are above. Set your affections, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. So we think about those things and listen, it's, it's easy to think, well, the church is, is doing what it ought to do. The church is moving forward. The church is living for God. The church is trying to accomplish the things of God. And so I'm going to invest in the church. Understand that. But let's look above that and seek first the kingdom of God. You see, this means that it is not about us at all. It is not about us in the slightest. This is not for your glory and this is not for my glory. 
This is not about making the church look good. Or, hey, we had so many in church this week. It has nothing to do with any of that. This is about everything being done for the glory of God. Being invested is not about making everyone think that you are a godly person. Being invested is not about everyone thinking that anything about you being invested is making people think about God. Let me say that again. Being invested is making people think about God. Who do people see in your life? Do they see how wonderful of a person you are? Do they see how great you are? Or do they see Christ in you? You see, if you're invested, If you're invested and you have Jesus Christ invested in you, which he already is, and you wear his cloak of righteousness, then they ought to see Christ. We ought to be pointing everything we do to Christ. The question is, how? How, I, I know, all right, I know what I'm supposed to invest in, but now how do I do that? Number two, I want you to see this. By doing all to the glory of God. By doing all to the glory of God. Colossians chapter 3 with me, if you would, in verse 23. This is an important verse. The Bible says this. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Do it with all of your might. As to the Lord and not unto men. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not unto men. You see, this is so, so important. Everything we ought to do ought to be done to the glory of God. Again, please let me be clear. This is not about your glory. This is not about you climbing the, quote, corporate ladder, the financial ladder, or or any ladder. This is not about climbing a ladder. This is about giving glory to God. This is about giving God the glory in everything. So let's just be practical. When you go to the grocery store this week, can you do that to the glory of God? Well, it's it's possible, but will you? You say, Pastor Jones, come on, honestly. I'm, I'm not even talking about going in and just nobody noticing you. I'm talking about everything that you do, it's to the glory of God. When you're driving to work this week, do it to the glory of God. Man, don't, don't talk about my driving, Pastor Yeomans. That's a touchy subject. When you're making dinner this week, guess what? Do it to the glory of God. Do it to the glory of God. When you're using social media today, do it to the glory of God. Do it to the glory of God. When you're raising your children, do it to the glory of God. When you're talking to someone, do it to the glory of God. For heaven's sake, please, when you come to church, do it to the glory of God. Listen, everything, everything, whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, but don't do it unto men. Don't come to church for me. Don't come to church for your family. Don't come to church because someone else told you you should. Come to church for the glory of God. Don't just go to work this week. Don't just earn a paycheck this week. Do it for the glory of God. Whatsoever you do. You say, Pastor Owens, how in the world can you do this? How in the world can you do things to the glory of God? Here's the key. So many of us are wrapped up in pleasing people. So many of us worry about what we look like. We spend time. Listen, I do this. I've been working from home over the last month or two because we've we've not gone to the office. And any time I get up to leave and go to the store, guess what? I'm not going in my pajamas. Not doing it. Why? Because I care about what people think of me. That's natural. That's normal. But so often we get so concentrated on that. We get so concentrated at how we look and pleasing this guy and pleasing that person and pleasing my boss and pleasing and pleasing and pleasing that we forget about God. I came to a realization recently that my entire life growing up and up really until this point, I have spent my time really focused on pleasing people. Let me illustrate what I mean. 
My parents were very strict parents, and I have no regrets of that whatsoever. It was a blessing. I look back on that now and think, wow, I'm so thankful for that. At the time, I didn't really care for it. But guess what? Deep down in my heart, guess what I wanted to do? I wanted to please my parents. I desperately wanted to please them. And the fact the Bible says in Ephesians, children, obey your parents. So often what we forget is in the Lord. It's in the Lord. And so I wanted my parents to look at me and say, wow, what a good boy. What a wonderful young man that we're raising. And I remember being in high school and trying to, literally, I remember this, trying to please the teachers and trying to please my coaches. And I wanted playing time. And so I would do whatever they said and please them and got playing time. I wanted to be a good student and I didn't want demerits. We had demerits in my school and if you got so many, you couldn't play sports anyway. And so I didn't want to get demerits. I wanted to please my teachers and please my principal. I remember going to college. Man, I wanted to please my professors and please all kinds of different people. I remember wanting to please my pastor. Please, 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 please. I remember coming to Bible Baptist Church, and I'm just going to be honest with you, I I wanted to please Pastor Stone. I wanted him to look at me and say, wow, what a wonderful, good young man. And as things began to progress, I wanted to please the people of Bible Baptist Church. I wanted them to look at me and say, wow, what a wonderful person. Hear me, that can be a good thing. But that falls short of what God intended for us. You see, because if all I do is try to please people, guess what I'm doing in the, next, in the last year? Not pleasing everybody. We all know the saying, you can please some of the people some of the time, but you cannot please all of the people all of the time. So if you're living your life to be a people pleaser, you're going to be very disappointed. Over the last year, our church has made decisions that some of you maybe don't agree with. Listen, I can't please everybody. It's it's impossible to do. And so listen, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord. Do all to the glory of God. Listen, it doesn't really matter what they think. Now, this is not to be brash. This is not to be rude. It's important to understand that you need to do those things to the glory of God. If I'm going to invest my life, not just my finances, not just my time, but my entire being, the whole man, the whole person, if I'm going to invest, I must invest everything, my whole life, into glorifying the Lord. It is important to maintain a good testimony. The Bible says that man looks on the outward appearance important to maintain a good testimony but our first thought should be to glorify god the rest of that verse man looketh on the outward appearance but listen the lord looketh on the heart there's no doubt in my mind that most of you will know this that what goes on in your heart is going to come out someday so proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 the bible says this keep your heart with all diligence For out of it are the issues of life. Everything you do comes from your heart. So let me ask you today, where's your heart? Does your heart want to please man? Or does your heart want to please God? Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if your heart is in the right place, you're going to please God. You're going to glorify God. And if you're constantly working toward that and begging God, God, today, this day, let me please you in all I say and do. Let me glorify you when I go to the grocery store. Let me glorify you in what I put on my body today. May you be seen in me. We will be glorifying God in everything we say and do, which will allow us to invest in the kingdom of God. So that's how. And that... We could, be very, we could spend all kinds of time being very specific. But that's between you and God. Between you and God and the things that you do. But I wanted you to see the third thing. Why? Why are we doing all this? Why am I investing in the kingdom of God? Why am I trying to glorify God in everything I say and do? I want you to see number three. For the return of God. 
for the return of God. Maybe you heard of an ROI. ROI, return on investment. Every one of us wants a return on investment. Let's think about the stock market. If I put $1,000 into the stock market, I want a return on that investment. I want to see that $1,000 maybe make $1,500. Maybe make $2,000. Maybe make $3,000. I don't know, but I want to see some sort of return on my investment. All of us do. Basically, it's this question. What's in it for me? If I'm going to give you something, I want, to re- I want a return. We, we often think that way, so let's, let's talk about this. I believe we ought to invest for two reasons. Number one, to get the return of Jesus. Playing on words here, to get the return of Jesus. Here it is, look at verse 24 of Colossians chapter 3. The Bible says this, Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance... For ye serve the Lord Christ. You see, if you'll do everything to the glory of God, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. The Bible often talks about receiving rewards. And and the Bible does that, and that's okay. And God God is instructive in that. If you will do the right thing, you will receive rewards. And we see that uh, you'll receive gold, silver, and precious stones if you're works are good. If your works are evil, you'll receive wood, hay, and stubble. Often the Bible talks about crowns and how we will receive crowns if we will remain faithful, if we will do the right things. And we could, again, spend a lot of time here, but just for sake of it, we will receive the reward of the inheritance when we invest in God, or excuse me, in the kingdom of God, by the glory of God, We will receive the reward. Our return on investment will will be from God. You see that here. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward. You're going to receive a reward. Who would you like to receive it from? Personally, I'd like to receive it from God. God is the gift giver. He has given us eternal life. He's given us all wonderful things, all good things Good and perfect gifts come from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You see, God is always good. So I would much rather receive from God than receive from men trying to please men. But here's the wonderful thing. See, we believe that when we receive rewards from God, we believe that one day, we cast them back at his feet. Let me take you there and show you that. Re- Revelation chapter 4. If you turn with me. Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. Revelation chapter 4, in verse 10. The Bible says this. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the, lo- the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. If, if, I, if I may, we cast those things at Jesus' feet because, listen, It's not about the rewards, it's about Jesus. You see, if we will invest in the kingdom of God, and we will do all things by the glory of God, for the glory of God, I believe that our return will be Jesus. We will have him in an abiding relationship, John chapter 15. We will live with him, we will yoke up with him, and we will have a light burden and easy yoke we will have a relationship with the savior we will have a relationship with the king of kings and lord of lords we will have a relationship with almighty god he says to abraham says i am thy exceeding great reward often we think maybe about a Uh, another man or another woman man if i could just have them as my spouse i would be happy 
Man, if I could just have them, they, they, what, a, what a prize they would be. Often we think about someone else. We think about a person as a prize and we just enjoy being with that person. Listen, hear me. This is nothing like that. This is far above anything that we could ask or think. This is a relationship with Jesus Christ who will walk with you, who will carry you, who will give you the strength that you need, who will give you love, who will give you joy, who will give you peace, who will be long-suffering to you, who will be kind and gentle to you, who will give you things that you never asked or dreamed for. The Bible says that he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He is so good we can have the return of Jesus Christ. We will have an abiding relationship with him. He will be our everything. You say, Pastor Yeomans, that's great. I've never experienced that before. I wish. First of all, I had time and I had words to explain to you what it, what it is to have an abiding relationship. Maybe John chapter 15 might be something you could read this week. And maybe understand and just ask God to show you what it means to have a relationship with him. Not only do we get the return of Jesus, but number two, I want you to see this, because Jesus is returning. Jesus is returning. Why should I invest in the kingdom of God? Why should I do all things to the glory of God? Because Jesus is returning. Someday, Jesus is going to come back. The Bible says that we will meet him in the air. Those who are his children are going to be called home with him. There are so many people in this world. There are so many people in this world who have never heard how they can even be called a child of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 12, but as many as received him, To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So he has given us all the opportunity to be a child of God. And when he comes back, he is going to take his children home with him. And so what must we do? What must we do? Invest. Invest in that. Clothe it. Give something to it. Surround it with everything that you have. Be surrounded with it. Be clothed in righteousness. Look unto Jesus. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5, the Bible says this, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, listen to this, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. This is an investment word. If we are going to, if Jesus, Jesus is going to come, and if we are going to be invested, we must redeem the time. We must use our time wisely. We must walk in wisdom toward them that are without, even when we're at the grocery store, even when we're at work. Listen, Jesus is coming back. Your coworker may not know who Jesus is. And if you are not invested, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It's not hid to us. Hid to them who are lost. Now more than ever. Now in 2021, now more than ever, we need to be invested Christians. Invested Christians, not in fighting the government. Not in stopping a virus even. Hear me. We need to be invested in the kingdom of God. In glorifying him. We need people who are going to invest their time, energy, into understanding what Jesus wants. And living our lives through him. Last week we finished up a series on joy. One of the things, one of the verses that we read was this, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Talking about being abased, humbled, or being raised up, exalted. In either case, do all things through Christ. 
Glorify him in all things. Austin's chapter 3 and verse 23. Do it heartily as unto the Lord. Please, please hear me. If Bible Baptist Church alone, just our members would be invested. Oh, no, no, not, not in Bible Baptist Church, but be invested in the kingdom of God. Let me ask you this question. What would our city look like? And we, we, we ask this question all the time, don't we? What if, to be quite frankly honest with you, I'm sick of asking what if. Let's start asking when. When? When will we get invested? The return on investment happens so much greater when you start younger. Again, financially, exponential interest. Compounding interest is a wonderful thing, but it works so much better for you the longer you're in it. If you're young, get in now. Get invested now. If you're old, get invested now. Your return is Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is returning. We have spent far too long burying our talents in the ground, thinking that we may have nothing to offer. Or we might be scared to put ourselves out there or we, we might think, well, I'm not sure how to please God and everything. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter. Let's figure out how we can take the talent that God has given us. And we'll use this illustration multiple times throughout this series. How we can take the talent that God has given us and multiply it. You see, God's in the multiplication business. He's in the compounding interest business. He, he's not even in the addition business. He's into taking things and exponentially growing them. I'll just give you one example. There was just a little boy one time who left his house. And as he left his house, his mother had made a lunch for him. He was excited because today he was going to see Jesus. As he attends, he sees Thousands and thousands and thousands of people there. I don't know how, but somehow he overheard that Jesus wanted to feed these people. These people were hungry. He knew that, and he didn't really care because he had his lunch with him. He was excited about the fact that he could hear Jesus, and he wasn't going to starve to death today. Somehow he overhears the disciples and Jesus talking that, hey, we don't have any money. We can't buy over 5,000 people bread with just a few pennies. One of the disciples brings him to Jesus, and this little boy had offered his lunch. He didn't know what he was doing, I don't believe. But I believe this. There are so many times in our lives that we don't know what God can do. But if we will just give what we have. This little boy had five pieces of bread and two fish. Probably not, probably not salmon, probably sardines. Just five loaves and two fish. And guess what Jesus did with it? He fed over 5,000 people. We believe up to 15,000 people with that because God multiplies. He compounding interest. And not only did he feed those 5,000 plus people, there were 12 baskets left over. 12. That little boy had more to eat that day than he would have if he had just kept his lunch to himself. So many of us are just pleased with ourselves, using our things to consume it upon our own lusts. My challenge to you is very simple today. Will you please be invested? Will you please invest in the kingdom of God? Will you please invest in what God is trying to do? Yes, yes, your local church, we want to do what God wants us to do. But far beyond that, 
the kingdom of God. We're going to spend the next several weeks walking through the book of Colossians, learning how we can be invested. So this is what I want to challenge you with. I want to challenge you with starting somewhere. Starting somewhere. Maybe you already do this, but I, I want to challenge you to start. Most of us don't know how to invest because we don't know what Christ wants. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to please him. We don't even maybe know what the kingdom of God is. So this is something that we want you to do personally. Every single individual, every church member, every member of the body, every individual investing themselves into the kingdom of God, we want to give you a launching pad to accomplish this. We've designed a Bible reading schedule for you over the next 90 days. 90 days, three months. I guess February is a little shorter, so not a little over three months. But 90 days of a Bible reading schedule, I'm going to tell you right now, it's very simple. It's one chapter a day. We're going to be posting that on social media right after the service this morning. We're going to start in the book of Galatians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And we're going to move past it. And I want you to focus in on this one thing. Listen, I want you to focus on one thing. How can I invest my life into the kingdom of God? That's the only question you need to ask. As you read Galatians chapter 1, find something in there that will teach you how to invest. Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 4, and so on. Invest. Listen, you might already have a Bible reading schedule, and I thank you for that, and that's wonderful. Continue to do that. Can I ask you? Add on to that. Add on to that. Just another chapter. Just another chapter a day. And ask, how can I be invested? Now again, there's a purpose behind this. Again, if every one of us, every single one of the members of Bible Baptist Church do this individually, but corporately, as a body. We get the body moving in the right direction. And when, again, if one person is invested, that's a wonderful thing. If I invest one dollar, hey, that's better than nothing, right? Yes, I agree. But what if I invested everything that I had? What if every single member of Bible Baptist Church started and got invested and started in this way? Again, you know that compounding interest, the more you put in, the more you get out. Let's do it together. Let's just start in this simple way, just a quick Bible reading schedule, something that we can all get. I challenge you this. I'm going to say this over and over and over again. Write down what you get out of that. When you are asking yourself the question, how can I be invested in the kingdom of God? When you find the answer from Galatians chapter 1, write it down. Write it down. Galatians chapter 2, write it down. Make your decision to be invested. I hope you'll invest the time to become a student of Jesus Christ. To seek Christ first. And I believe as we look at this, We'll begin to share hope as we continue to be invested in who Christ is. We will be invested in sharing who Christ is. We can invest in the hope that we have in him. Let me ask you this question in closing. Are you invested? Are you invested? No, really invested. If you're not, let's make a decision today to be invested, to be all the Bible says that we're lukewarm, spews us out of his mouth. I would that thou wert cold or hot. Let's get hot. Let's get invested. Let's be all in for Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day, for all you've done for us. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity, this medium in which we're able to Present the gospel still. Father, as we look at being invested, may we simply ask ourselves, am I invested? There may be one that's listening to this 
service today that does not even know you as personal Savior, Father, I pray that today would be the day that they know that. Father, for the rest that know and understand that have heard and spent time with you and asked you as personal Savior, then Father, I pray that in return they would present their bodies a living sacrifice and they would invest into your work, your will, and your way. Father, we love you. Thank you for even the opportunity. Without your shed blood, we would not have this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross that we might have eternal life. And we pray all these things in your name. I'm going to ask you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed if you would this morning. Very simply, it's decision time. I hope that the message was clear enough to help you understand what the decision needs to be. Maybe you need to write down as of February 7th, 2021, I am invested in the kingdom of God. Or I will be invested tomorrow. Or excuse, today, tomorrow, and from here on out. I, I don't know how you want to write it down. I don't know what you need to write down, but please make some sort of decision today that will help you be invested in the kingdom of God. Let's go ahead and give you an opportunity to make that decision right now.